Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of Spirit of HRRL. In this, we cover the stories, inspiring stories of all the officers and workers who are working at HPCL Rajasthan Refinery Limited, a 9 million metric ton refinery from petrochemical complex at Pachpadra, Badmer. The refinery, which is one of the largest greenfield refinery from petrochemical complex. And today we have with us Mr. Debashish Mandal, who has 25 years of experiences in working with Mumbai Refinery and now here, he is from 2020 here at HRRL and working for this project. So without further ado, let's dive into this interview and know his story. Devashish ji, uh, welcome to this platform uh, where we interview um, inspiring stories, inspiring people who are working behind HRRL and also, you know, uh, contributing to the nation building. The first question that I would like to ask you is, uh, how would you describe the transformation of uh, Pachpadra from barren desert to today's thriving economy? I would say that the transformation happened, like transformation from the barren desert to what you see today is the amazing story of, you know, the dedication of the people, the hard work and the dedication that has gone from all the people together. If I remember when I came first to Pachpadra, within a radius of 15 kilometers, five kilometers, you went go get a bottle of water. Now you can see that a lot of, you know, transformation has happened, lot proper roads are there. Hotels are there, labor camps are there. If you see our story of the HRRL, when I came here... So when, when did you come here? I came in 2020. 20, okay. From 2020, what I see is, actually this transformation happened in 2018. Okay. From 2018, we started with the construction of the boundary wall, construction of the roads, filling of this land, and we made the contracts, EPCC contracts developed, and the execution of the units. Along with all this transformation, we again started our township also. And the township started again with a barren from a barren land. And now you have seen that it has taken a lot many shape and now it is in the verge of completion. This is how the whole transformation has started. And it is now going to come to an end. Along with this also, the surrounding region across this uh, refinery is also developing. And this is developing because of the infrastructure that has been developed. The people have started getting the jobs, they're getting transportation opportunities. If you see this story, it is, it is an amazing success. It is a success story of all the people. People have literally transformed themselves also. That is truly inspiring for them. This is how the transformation started. So, and now it is going to end. App that you have told me because uh, I also came in 2018 and uh, when I'm coming now there is there has been huge huge development uh, you know um, across this place and uh, kudos to HRRL which is really contributing to the development of this economy you talked about the challenges that you face so what are the key challenges you personally witnessed uh, while leading the developments of HRRL from say 2020 when I came here the lot of challenges I've encountered but I'll just state a few of the challenges the first challenge, I'll say the logistics of the, you know, the equipments that because what is happening now, this is a remote location and it's only connected by the roads. Okay. So most of the equipment that is coming from the manufacturing, you know, workshop to this location is a, real, is a quite challenge. For me, I'm the project manager for CD video and both Vijo also. For bringing the Vijo reactor from Dahesh to this location, it almost took a year. Lot of hurdles, lot of hindrances on the way. We had to do a lot of coordination and a lot of coordination with the state and government authorities of the two states, a lot of coordination with the people, a lot of coordination with the EPCCs, with the OEMs. After having a lot of all these things coming together, then only we could make this a success, bring that reactor to this place. All details, you also know that, but it's not a time to give all the details to you. But I'm telling that logistics is one of the challenge. The second challenge we are facing in this location, particularly in this location, is the intense heat. If you see in the, in the peak summer days, the heat of this place is affecting directly, it's having a direct impact on the workers who are really the people who are doing the jobs. So what arrangements we do here, we do some special arrangements. Like if you can see in other projects and all, here if you see some special innovative arrangements we do, we take special care of the labor sheds, with special care regarding the drinking, cooling waters, desert coolers at the location, adjusting the timing of the work, work so that they can work more easily in the morning time and the evening time, rest all, they can take rest. Even arrangements are made in the labor camps to make this environment a safer environment for them to work. 
so this is one of the challenge the third challenge i will say the retention of the manpower right you know that this is a remote location most of the labor most of the workers are coming from the far off places mostly from the north eastern sites so what is happening when they get a better opportunity there they leave this location so it's, it's a like everyday basis people the lot of attrition is happening lot of people are well bringing but the challenge still remains because you have to train every time a new person comes in exactly and the fourth most challenge specific to this unit is that we have faced for cdvd was the you know the cash flow of the contractor we had been a time when covid was there right the thing started uh, prices started increasing so people the contractors also were facing some cash flow so what we what what changes we made what we do did something differently that we could say that feel proud of that we started seeing the payment terms with some innovative changes we made in the payment terms and not going by the conventional payment philosophy which helped these contractors to revive the project at certain point of time it came to a standstill but again we revived it and now it has taken a shape now it's on the verge of completion that is uh, that is we as a, i'm pro, as a project manager feel proud of that very nicely you have put put in all the articulated all the challenges that you have faced uh, so as a project manager uh, the units that you are handling so how do you monitor the project and uh, uh, how do you manage the uh, manpower that is reporting to you uh, that the project is working smoothly as per the timelines how do you do that a very good question sir um, this project is being monitored not only by the you know the project managers it is monitored by each and every individual getting involved in this project how do you do it first of all we have certain reports certain mis these are the standard reports we do monitor but those reports cannot give you the exact you know the insight of this uh, place so what we do is we constantly interact with the people my officers but they get the feedback they try to resolve the problems at the field if anything that comes to me i will interact with the epccs i interact with the pmcs i interact with other uh, stakeholders to know the what are the areas of concerns what are areas of concerns that are basically obstructing or the hindering my uh, you know progress of the job all those hindrances we try to mitigate so that everybody work as a team and the project moves in a success you had an interesting career in hpcl over uh, 25 years so looking back at your career journey across different roles in hpcl what has been the most uh, if you if you want to pinpoint some defining moments uh, what would you like to tell about that see there are a lot of uh, things i've seen in hpcl i joined in hpcl in 2001 i was on basically maintenance department i have seen the static department i have seen the rotary department i had been to metals management i had been to reliability cell I had been one year in capability building. After doing all those things, I got interested in joining the project. There's one department left out for me, so I joined in project in 2016. Okay. So in 2016, I got a privilege to work for VRMP. I was in a team who was handling the PMC contracts. Okay. So after one year of this contract, uh, one year in project, in 2017, again we revived this RRP. I came to RRP in 2017, and from there onwards, I'm in this look. I'm this basically this project. Starting my career in this project was the biggest moment for me. Okay. I'll let you know how this happened. I was also new to this project. Correct. And that too in a greenfield integrated, you know, refining com petrochemical complex. A big challenge for me. I didn't know how to develop the contracts. All my peers, my colleagues, my leaders. they have taught how what is the project management how it is done with all this i could complete the pre construction activities i could make the contracts prepare the contracts then in 2020 i came to site then came the execution part then i was the project manager for cdv and vgo and this execution started from 2019 and lot of challenges in between happened okay finally at this location at this place i can proudly say that my project my unit is on the verge of completion this i can proudly say that's very good to hear so these are the you know, happy moments for me i'm very proud of that just last uh, question uh, ending up so if you would because you're leading a, a large uh, team right now so uh, if you would like to describe your leadership style in uh, what words would you like to dis- describe it see for me leadership is being involvement i involve with the people I only say that three things which how do I define relationship the three T's one is trust trust on my people 
how do people trust me and how do I trust people? If I don't trust people, people don't trust, trust me. And that will come if I have a mutual respect for my people. For my people. Get them involved in the job. This is one of the things I personally believe and I personally carry on with this, this thing. The second the part is the transparent. I always say my team is be transparent with all all activities, with everything be transparent. Maybe you are some have something you have kept in your mind, you are not speaking out. Speak out, be transparent. If any issue is there, we are here to solve it. It may be big or small, but issues is an issue. If issues we cannot kill, then something is paining us. Correct. So all these things, second the third is the I believe in transformation. Transformation, how it will come? Transformation comes because of a continuous improvement. The continual improvement will help in us transformation. And in such a project, it is a temple of learning. Everybody can get involved, learn something, learn, something. learn for yourself, learn for your career. Knowledge is the power. Knowledge is the power. And this is, this place, I tell you, it is the temple of this knowledge. Tell anything, you'll get here. You go to any of the project, you will not find such such type of learning in this project. I always tell people learn, learn and learn. If you learn not only in your personal, uh, in your career, in professional career also help you to pick, to go to a pick by learning. And this learning will help you to transform yourself, both from the technical point of view and from behavioral point of view. This, these three things I always personally follow. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Devashish ji. It was uh, pleasant talking to you. And uh, we got to know about your leadership style. We got to know about how you are managing the project and uh, how you are you're progressing very quickly towards commissioning of the project. And uh, best of luck to you uh, for all the coming endeavors. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Suryapita, for this opportunity. Thank you so much.